Welcome back. It is Wednesday, February the 13th. My guest is Torrance Cost uh, from the Wilderness Committee, and we're going to be talking about a few things, and starting off with uh, forestry, which uh, unfortunately is just getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah, or, uh, or, or at least maintaining the status quo, which when it's something like uh, old growth forests, specifically original forest, you know, the status quo continuing the same management is getting worse and worse. These are forests that we didn't plant and that aren't resources to be managed. They're ecosystems in and of themselves, and we need to look at them as non-replaceable. Uh, I think the Wilderness well, Committee... a lot of people do, so why, yeah. why is it continuing? Looks at them as not... Look, look at them as non-replaceable? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's an industry that's, that's powerful. Uh, they've, they've built this powerful narrative that lots of jobs depend on this industry. They do. But the bulk of jobs in forestry in this province are in manufacturing. Uh, they're not in, in the forest. Lots of people go to work on driving trucks or cutting down trees, but that could just as easily be done in second, third, fourth growth managed forest than it should, and eventually it will be. Yeah. Lots of jurisdictions don't do old growth logging because they finished cutting all down all the original forest in the 90s. Uh, I want BC, I want Vancouver Island to switch off of old growth logging before we get there. So how much is left? I mean, of, uh, of good, you know, the prime yeah, valley Yeah, yeah, the government, the government skews those numbers. You know, they call high elevation or low, low kind of shore bogs. Uh, they classify that as old growth. The but stuff when, you, when you close your eyes and picture an old growth forest, the big, big, big uh, enormous trees, uh, healthy understory, lots of resources used by indigenous groups and, and uh, high carbon storage potential, we're down to well under, well under 10% on Vancouver Island. Uh, and despite that, we're still logging it at a rate of uh, around 10,000 hectares a year, which it's hard to picture a hectare on this, over the scale of a year. We've, we've crunched the numbers and it works out to 34 soccer fields per day of original forest are coming down uh, just on Vancouver Island. That's, that's not a sustainable rate for a type of ecosystem that can't be replaced. That's per day of old growth? Forest? Yeah, and that's just on Vancouver Island. And Say it again. how much? 30, 34. The equivalent of 34 soccer. regulation soccer fields a day, and that's again just on the island. Uh, we raised this over and over again with the uh, the previous BC Liberal government, and at that time the NDP, while in opposition, they you know echoed our concern and said, "Oh yes, we're concerned about that too." Uh, they ran uh, in their platform on switching to ecosystem-based management across the province, uh, similar model to what we see in the Great Bear Rainforest on the central coast. But since getting into power uh, 18 months ago, they have taken no meaningful steps to move uh, away from that and are essentially carrying out the exact same policy of old growth liquidation that their predecessors were. I'm a member of the NDP and I'm totally just, the leadership of the party is, I think, a disgrace to the, <laughs> to the membership because you're, I don't think you're doing what a lot of us want. but. Yeah, I mean, on forest especially, there's a couple glaring pieces. Uh, you know, you can argue they're doing a little bit more on, say, the Kinder Morgan pipeline, although, you know, we wish they were doing more on that. Uh, but on, on issues like old growth forest, they are essentially copying what the Liberals were doing, and that's, uh, that's really disappointing to see. I'm not disappointed because <laughs> it's exactly what I expected. And unfortunately, that's kind of the root problem, mm. is that... Uh, what the people of the province want, uh, and I saw studies done by Forestry Canada many, many years ago that showed that the people of Canada do not want all of our old growth forests destroyed. Mm -hmm. That's not what people want. Mm -hmm. But our governments don't care, and, and so somehow we have to uh, gain a situation where what the public wants actually counts for something in this crazy country of ours. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to see that. We're for, always at the Wilderness Committee. That's why groups like us have to exist, you know, to try to make as much noise as, as industry, as political parties, as the media sometimes. Uh, but if, if the government did what, uh, what the vast majority of the public want, groups like the Wilderness Committee wouldn't need to exist. They'd have to find a new job. <laughs> um, do you want to just com uh, comment if for a few seconds on the role of the media because the issue of old growth 
liquidation, which is very important to me and to many people, never mm -hmm. even get some, you never hear about it, you never see about it, yeah. it's just not yeah. there. We have to fight to get coverage of that issue. I think the media is, is I mean, it's a competitive, you know, profit-driven industry for the most part. They're trying to, uh, they're trying to get people to watch their channel or read their paper instead of, instead of the others. Uh, and that's, you know, there's not a lot of room for in-depth, uh, you know, really well, issue, issue focused. Depth, just, just what some you coverage. just yeah. said, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, um, I mean, uh, we're watching our province be destroyed, mm -hmm. and not only by the old growth uh, getting cut down, yeah. but LNG and yeah. everything else. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing after another. Yeah, it's it's something that we definitely have a lot of frustration in. Uh, you see some of the best coverage actually in uh, in small towns, uh, forest-based communities. Um, you know, Port Alberni, Port McNeil, Campbell River, places like that, because the reporters at those papers, the, the publishers, you know, they have probably friends and family that work in the industry or that are impacted by the industry, or they go out and hike in, in uh, the, the local old growth stand, uh, wherever wherever it is, whereas, you know, here in, in the cities, that's just not the case always, um, which is frustrating because that's where most of the people in this province live, in the lower mainland or in on southern Vancouver Island, and that's where most of the media is produced and consumed so no you know for, for a crisis as important as this one it has so many implications uh, water quality and quantity moving forward climate change its ability to buffer uh, you know these unexpected precipitation and weather patterns that we're expecting in a change in climate uh, the old growth forest ability to provide resources to First Nations that don't come back in second growth the habitat that's provided for for endangered species that only thrive in those original forests the, the importance of these ecosystems can't be understated, and unfortunately, by by most media, especially you know the bigger bigger corporate media, uh, it, it's definitely understated. But that's their job, mm. uh, is to understate uh, what's what their owners are doing to us. Um, you wanted to talk a little bit about um, the Souk Hills and talk of a row. Uh, I mean, anybody who you know the Malahat keeps getting, yeah. uh, for one reason or another, there's problems. So they're talking about building a new road. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly from where to where, mm -hmm. but through what's called water district lands. Yeah, so far no one knows exactly where it's going to go, but uh, they're looking at the province announced in January of this year, a feasibility study to look at an alternative to the west of the existing Malahat Highway. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to the west of the highway, almost immediately, you have the old ENN rail corridor, uh, which we should be using. I can touch more on that in a second. But almost immediately after that, you have uh, regional park uh, land. That's called the Souk Hills Wilderness Regional Park. It was created in the 90s uh, after public campaigning, lots of local activists. The Wilderness Committee at the time was involved. And, uh, and yeah, some foresight and vision by the Capital Regional District to say, hey, look, you know, there's, there's so little protected area on the south of this island. Let's set a little bit aside, um, and in conjunction with some other protected areas, it actually forms a pretty substantial belt, uh, kind of between Goldstream and Souk, uh, and that's exactly where they're looking at putting a highway. Uh, the exact routing, I guess, is what they're trying to figure out. But to, to build a new a new highway rather than upgrade a rail line or get more people on buses and transit, and to do it through one of the few forested areas that's already protected, makes absolutely no sense. Uh, you know, maybe it would have made sense in 1949 or 1959, but not in 2019. Uh, just before we started the segment here, I checked and the Capital Regional District Board of Directors declared, uh, officially declared climate change an emergency, um, a great first step. We need to see that followed up by action <coughs> and uh, them kind of going along with the province's interest in a, a brand new highway through an area as important as the Souk Hills is, is not the action we need to be seeing on climate change. Um, do you have any idea what public opinion is on that question? I don't. I mean, I know there is overwhelming desire for something to be done about the Malahat. <clears throat> um, I commute from Shawnigan Lake into Victoria on the bus myself. Um, I've had to crash on French friends couches here in the city uh, when the Malahats closed a couple times last year. Uh, I can speak to that inconvenience, I understand it. Um, but the answer is getting cars off the road. <clears throat> the answer is, uh, I think, slowing traffic down on the Malahat. You know, that's what everybody says, yeah. but there's no enforcement. They will not enforce mm -hmm. in almost in order to, uh, this is what I think, to cause the accidents, yeah. to create the chaos, yeah. which is allowing them to now build a new road. Yeah. Because 
you know, so that's the actual fact of yeah. what's happening. So I think, I think you know, there's a lot of pressure, and, and with the public frustration of what's happening up there right now on that stretch of highway, I think any any uh, thing that's promoted as a solution might be jumped on, might be popular publicly, but I think we have to uh, pump the brakes a little bit on it. Um, and uh, and and decide what the best course of action is. We I can't just. CFAX has really been pushing it. I think from, from the okay, little bit yeah. I still yeah. listen to them. Yeah, um, it, it just sounds like yeah they're right behind a new road. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, it's a slippery slope. I mean, once you change the status of a, of a park reserve, a, a regional protected area, to allow something like a highway through, uh, it, you know, it could, they, they can say, we're just going to have the highway. It's only going to open in the event of a Malahat closure. But I think if we spend oh. a ton of public of money on something like that, the road's sitting there, there's going to be demand for it to open. And once that happens, there'll be pressure from fast growing Langford, you know, one of the fastest growing municipalities, I think, in the country. Uh, there'll be pressure on it. To to develop north, um, you have all this land. There'll be developers hungry to cash in, and uh, and that area that was a park saved in the late 1990s, thanks to the hard work of thousands of citizens, will be under permanent pressure uh, for things like suburban sprawl, the exact kind of development that we need to be getting away from in a changing climate. And we can. Yeah. Talk a bit about the ENM. Yeah, so I mean, we have this rail line, you know, there's uh, municipalities, uh, urban areas the size of the capital region, there's probably none in the world that have a rail line that comes from, uh, you know, uh, the Cowichan Valley and north right into the heart of the city Isn't that's crazy? just sitting unused. It makes no sense. We know we need to be getting people out of cars. Uh, it's going to take a little bit, it's going to take money, uh, of course, to upgrade the line. It's going to take a little bit of political capital uh, for the provincial government to invest in that, uh, and they're going to lose a huge argument they have if they build another alternative to the Malahat. Right now they can say we need to invest and get rail service going on this line for environmental reasons, to cut down on pollution, to make the Malahat safer by taking cars off of it, and so that if there is a crash or a tree comes down in the wind, people can park their car here in the city and take the train home and, and, and feed their kids dinner. Once they lose that, that's a strong argument I think for a lot of people, once they lose that, once there's, once they've plowed a bunch of money into another alternative route to the Malahat, they'll lose that argument and we could be sacrificing our chance at getting that rail going for another generation and that's a huge, huge waste. You know, it is absolutely unbelievable how the just craziest decisions keep getting made <laughs> by our leadership. They are just so far out of our control. You know, it's, it's horrifying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you think the CRD is going to do? Uh... Um, I think, you know, you have a couple, uh, a couple CRD uh, councillors, um, you know, as, as kind of diverse in sort of historical opinions as Ben Isett and Mike Hicks, who have both come out and expressed concern about this, uh, one over the protected area, the other over water, because the road, road, uh, proposed road uh, area they're looking at also is the buffer zone for the uh, Souk Lake watershed, the drinking supply for most of is the capital region. Is it in the watershed? Uh, it's just, it's kind of, it's, it's within the watershed, uh, but it's not sort of in the core protected area. Um, so it's in, it's in what they call the buffer lands. Um, so I, I'm optimistic that the CRD, uh, in conjunction with a little uh, public pressure, which is why I'm glad we're talking about it at the Wilderness Committee, we plan to, to do our part to elevate this into a, a household issue if we can. Uh, I think the CRD could do the right thing and recommend the province not go ahead with this. So that was talking about a secondary route open the Malahat, and the e and looks to me like the best the best idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Torrance Cost, thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.